Well, just let me let me just start. Let me just start off real quick. So, you know, obviously we're disappointed. You know, six losses in a row, never a good thing. You know, last night, you know, after the game, I felt like we just went out there and and played soft. We're playing soft at the moment, and when I say playing soft, that means you know, the, stopping the run, being able to run the ball, and and being able to cover kicks, which we weren't able to do. Now, in saying that, look, do I think we have the guys in there that can turn this ship around, one hundred percent? But you know, that comes through hard work, hard work on the practice field and going out there, um, just getting better each and every day. Fire away. Uh, Mike Reese, or Bob, you're on the screen. You're on my screen. You want, you want, Bob, you want to lead or do you want me to lead it? Okay. Lead it, Mike. Okay. Um, Gerard, from, from day one with your coaches, you know, you've talked about being demanding without being demeaning. Yeah. And, and I'm curious how much your core belief in that has been shaken just by the way that the team is playing and, and just what's maybe what's happening around the team. That, that's, that's in my DNA. You know, once again, like a lot of these things are about relationships and treating people as human beings. So, so that's in my DNA. That doesn't mean like we're out there, you know, coaching these guys soft. I think the coaches do uh, do a good job of coaching them hard. And, you know, obviously it would be easy if we were sitting here at six and one to, to continue to have that message. But at one and six, it's a, I guess it's a natural question from you, uh, should we change up our coaching style? And, and right now, I, I just think that we need to continue to work hard and continue to push the players uh, to get the results on the field. And I had one um, question on on um, a key point in the game, the second yeah. quarter. Um, the, the second drive the Jaguars had in that quarter, um, the, the first two plays, was a three yard run and then the 58 yard pass. That was a big play. Um, it looked to me and correct me if I'm wrong, you stayed in base. Um, the first down play, they had the three tight ends. Yeah. And then I think they switched to, to two tight ends, two receivers, but you, I think you stayed in base on the 58 yarder. And I'm just wondering if you, you were okay with that, not subbing there, if I have it I right. No, no, I am okay with that. And I would say you can play based on multiple personnel groups, 21, 12, 13, it doesn't matter. The same thing with our sub packages. Now, look, you know, no matter what package is out there with a big play like that, it's down the field. So everyone else really doesn't matter up front. So. Bob. Yeah, good morning, Bob. Uh, Good morning. Thanks, Stacey. Good morning. Um, I want to ask you, I guess, a question related to what Mike asked first regarding the messaging and the way you handled the team going back to the spring even with the OT of the off season conditioning and then you go through OTAs in training camp there's been such a significant turnover in terms of personnel guys who weren't with you uh maybe in the spring or even you know through training camp uh are, are you concerned sometimes with the messaging is different the way it's received with those guys because they haven't invested those hours with you and the staff out on the practice field, in the weight room, et cetera, you know, to, to really fully buy in, I guess is what I'm asking. No, I, you know, it's a good question. Look, we're all um, look continuing to get better, continuing to uh, learn one another. I would say the messaging is the messaging. And, you know, when you hear me say, you know, we played soft, I mean, that's, that's how I feel about it. And it would be easy for me to sit up here and go through injuries and all that stuff. But I mean, that would be pointless to me. We have to be able to go out there and perform at a high level with the guys that we have. And, and a follow up uh, regarding Drake and you and Elliot, uh, when you met, met with us in the spring around the draft time and talked about you know, meeting him and the things you liked about him, uh, the way he didn't throw teammates under the bus at North Carolina's toughness, et cetera. Now he's been through two games and uh, he's been in, in you know, some adversity. Uh, and he's played, you know, well uh, for long stretches of those two games. What have you seen from him? What have you discovered that's new about Drake May, or maybe pleasantly surprising about your quarterback that you didn't really uh, know when you, when you drafted him? Well, you know, I would say it's just his overall toughness. I mean, he's still out there. He's uh, taking hits and getting back up and still stepping into the pocket. I think he's doing a good job when you talk about progress from game one to game two. You know, no turnovers yesterday, which is headed in the right direction. Um, he's definitely playing uh, at a good level for us. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Uh, we'll go back to Mike Reese. And I'll, I'll just ask, guys, uh, put raise your hand and turn your screen on if you have questions to ask. It's hard for me to see on this uh, monitor uh, without doing that. 
Stacy, I already asked two, and it looks like you got others lined up. So let me defer to the others for now, if that's okay. Okay. So guys, go ahead and if if hand is raised, go ahead and uh, ask. I'm I'm disconnected on my end, so sorry about that. <clears throat> hey, Gerard. Um, I just want to ask you real quick. What's the balance like for you? Just obviously knowing the game and knowing what to do at, from your playing career but realizing that guys aren't you and just having to work through that as a coach and how to adjust to that? Uh, look, that's a good question. What I would say is, you know, these are professional football players in there. This isn't, you know, this isn't college. My, my messaging to them is like, this is a job. We play a game, but this is a job. And we all get evaluated on a day-to-day -day basis and obviously on game day. And, you know, we just have to do better. And, you know, whether, you know, I don't really use that experience of me being a player. You know, I try to coach everyone in their own unique style, but at the same time, we just got to perform better. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Gerard. Um, I had a question about kind of the whys of some of the, uh, you know, the things that you were talking about with the team, you know, you saying they played soft and also kind of some of the the comments uh, afterwards with, uh, with Kendrick Bourne in particular about, um, maybe guys weren't as engaged as they should be um, in off the field, uh, you know, off the field habits and things of that nature. Why do you feel that there's you know, kind of a, what appears to be a disconnect between your overall messaging of we need to be a hard, tough football team, engaged, you know, playing for each other, and you know, what seems to be kind of um, developing on Sundays? Um, I didn't hear what the, what Kendrick said, but what I will say, I'm not sure if he's talking about some of the off the field issues. Um, that have kind of creeped up here the last couple of weeks. Is that what he was talking about? Uh, he was the guy staying up too late, um, you know, may, maybe not having the best diet and off-field uh, preparation. Wasn't necessarily, um, you know, off the field, other aspects. Yeah, to, to me, that's part of being a professional. That's part of being a professional. This is your job. And your job's not only inside this building, but also outside this building. Taking care of your body and all that stuff, that's that's part of it. And that equals longevity in this in this league. You know, for me, you know, the messaging is we just need to get better. We have to do everything to, a little bit better. Um, you look at the game yesterday, we started off fast. We talked about starting fast. And then obviously it was disappointing to end the half and, and really couldn't get things started in the second half. And uh, that just comes through, you know, continue to grind, continue to push through. So, look, you want to get to heaven, you got to go through hell sometimes. And it may feel that way uh, right now, but hopefully uh, we turn this around. And just Next in terms again. of stopping... Go ahead. Just in terms of stopping the run, um, that obviously has been a glaring uh, weakness the last three weeks. What do you see there? Is it the defensive line? Is it uh, filling gaps? What's uh, what's the rationale? It, it's the it's the front seven, and we just have to be more disciplined and building a wall and defeating blockers in front of us. It's not. It, it, I mean, it's easy. Look, it's not the X's and O's. We just have to be where we're supposed to be. Um, last week, it was the big runs that really we talked about taking away those three big runs, and it's not a it's not a problem. We're not even having this conversation. Yesterday, it was almost like death by a thousand cuts, whether it was four yards, six yards, five yards, and that I mean that's tough. That's tough, and, and um, you know I would like to sit here and say, you know, it's this guy, that guy. Like I'm not going to do that. It's all of us up front. Thank you. Okay, next next question, Taylor Kyle's followed by Karen Grigi. Taylor? All right, we'll go to Karen Gregan. Good morning, Gerard. Good morning, Karen. When you hear uh, of players speaking out, uh, whether it was Kendrick Bourne or Daniel Laquale this week, uh, Devon Godchow previous weeks, do you see that as a method of self-policing or is it possible potential to create a divide in the room? Yeah, I don't think it, it creates a divide in the room at all. I think just how I use, you know, the media sometimes for messaging, I think some of the players do the same thing. I'm not going to tell them, you know, say this, say that. No, like if that's how you feel, if you feel like you're the best player, then go out and do it. If you feel like uh, you want to challenge your, your brother beside you, I mean, go out and do it. Just, you know, I think they use it as a tool, you know, uh, to get guys going. Thanks. Next question, Dakota Randall. Hey, Gerard, um, I don't want to read too much into social media, but Jalen po posted then deleted a 
peace sign emoji on his Instagram story after the game. Some people interpreted that a certain way. I'm just wondering if you spoke to him about that or have any reason to question his commitment to the team after yesterday. I have not spoken uh, about that. And I don't question his, his devotion to the team at all. We'll give uh, Taylor Kyles another opportunity. Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you for your time, Coach. Um, when it comes to some of the penalties and discipline errors, it seems like a lot of them lately have come from veterans and sometimes captains. So I wonder as a coach, is it more discouraging when it's your leaders committing some of those errors? And where's the fix when it is, again, the guys that you look to for leadership kind of committing those errors? Yeah, no matter who it is, whether you're a rookie or a veteran player, like penalties are just unacceptable. And you see what happened yesterday. You know, we jump off sides and then they go for two points. It's like we're all we're giving these guys extra opportunities by shooting ourselves in the foot. And that's just not good football. Thank you. Thanks. And we'll finish where we started. Uh, Mike Reese. Uh, then it's sort of on the same lines as Dakota, uh, KJ Osborne posted something on Instagram, like a text exchange with his agent. And his agent said, we're, we have to figure out this situation, or we'll, we'll work to figure out this situation. Well, I guess, what is the situation with him that that's going on, I guess? I'm not, I'm not sure what the exact situation is. I, you know, look, he's probably frustrated because he's not playing as much as he wants to. And, you know, I understand that. If you want, if you think you should be out there on the field and not having those opportunities, you will get frustrated. It's a natural human reaction. Uh, I would, I would hope that they would keep that stuff in house. And I have that open door policy. If he feels a certain type of way, he always has the ability to speak to me. But that's those guys' freedom of speech. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.